Hey, we're Drew and Katie Taylor, and on this episode of Catholic Link, we had the privilege of interviewing the previous podcast host for Catholic Bites, which is morphing into Catholic Link, and hear about his journey through the years, and a little bit about if you want to create content, how, why, what that looks like, and so much more. So we pray that this conversation blesses you as we had the opportunity to provide a little tribute to Father Conrad Murphy and all that he has done for Catholic Cast Media. Father Conrad, welcome to the Catholic Link Show. Hey, thanks for having me. That sounds weird in like saying welcome to the show because it's it's your show that we are now morphing into. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. The, the the video aspect makes it more your your show than mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, um, for our listeners and for Father Conrad's listeners, uh, this is going to be a cool episode because uh, we get to interview Father Conrad, who has been the head honcho of the Catholic Bites podcast. And for those of you guys who don't know, um, Catholic Bites is part of a bigger organization called Cast Media, which is a nonprofit organization. And uh, we have decided to kind of blend Catholic Bites and what is now Catholic Link for CatholicLink.org together under one umbrella so that all the branding matches um, <laughs> as, as Father Conrad kind of graduates off into bigger and better things. So we were just hoping to be able to interview him on the show today and, and just get his, in, his perspective of, of what the last couple of years have been like on the podcast. So Father Conrad, what, what are the origins of the Catholic Bites podcast and how did you get involved with it? Yeah, so the Catholic Bites podcast started um, in Rome when I was in seminary, and uh, I was about to be ordained a priest, and three priests, um, including one of your friends, uh, <clears throat> Father George, uh, started, uh, they, had a, they had a great inspiration that, you know, they listened to a lot of podcasts, and that this is an effective medium for communicating the gospel, and I listened to a lot of podcasts too, because I'm, I'm a runner, and I, I like to listen to that when I'm running, and I was running all over the city listening to different things. And uh, when they told me that they were thinking about this idea of starting a podcast, I was like, oh, dude, sign me up. That, that sounds great. Um, I'd love to help out in any way. And so they they asked me, you know, the, at the time, the format was they had three hosts and then those hosts would um, uh, invite in different guests and you were given kind of specific topics because they their goal was to kind of like do an entire catechetical library of um so that you could you could like take that for RCIA and just like hand them this whole podcast feed and like be able to like talk about anything. So they tried to get experts on or or people who were armchair experts like myself uh, to to talk about um, all these different topics. So I remember very distinctly my first episode where um, we still didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't know how to work any of the equipment. We didn't know like it, we recorded um, in this really weird uh, room like on top of the bathrooms by the refectory by the, the cafeteria <laughs> and it was hot and um uh it was um difficult to um uh to 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 like kind of focus and and i had to do my first episode five different times uh because mm -hmm. we messed it up so many times and we didn't know, know what we were doing and so by the end of things uh it was um definitely like a a uh, you know, I was like, okay, I know a lot about Our Lady of Guadalupe. I've got Our Lady of Guadalupe stuff going on. Uh, so with that, like the podcast kind of started. So it started, um, I guess that's like almost seven years ago. And from there, um, oh my gosh, my students are just standing outside my my door right now, staring at me just to annoy me. So uh, that's why my I keep glancing, <laughs> glancing over. Um, anyway, uh, so so from there, like, I mean, I, I helped out with different episodes, things like that. And then when I came back to the United States, um, uh, I, um, uh, I started doing, they asked me to help out with the 60 seconds podcast. And so that was fun, like, but it was hard to try and figure out how to say anything in 60 seconds. Um, yeah. so we did that for a while. And then, um, and there were some fun things in that, like, uh, me and another priest friend had a competition to see who could work in different words into the podcast and things like that. And, uh, which was fun, but then, I had this idea um, a couple, like five years ago, about maybe doing a podcast on the history of the popes. And um, I had been listening to a, a really great history podcast. And I was like, I'd love a podcast like this going through each of the popes. Because there's 264. And, and, you know, we could probably name five of them, you know, just off the top of our heads. 
Uh, and there's, so there's got to be a lot of history and a lot of interesting stories. And, and there really was. And so I, I pitched that idea uh, to the powers that be. And um, that's how our, the podcast Habemus Papam uh, started. And um, and then from there, uh, a couple, uh, maybe a year later, uh, the, the guys in Rome were, were kind of uh, not as enthusiastic about continuing the podcast in the format they were doing it. And I had this idea. I was talking to one of my friends, Father um, Chris and Father Alec, who are the like kind of two most recurring guests on the show. And I was saying like, man, our, our, our conversations are so weird and so nerdy about the faith. Like, what if we turn this into a podcast? And it was just like a really nerdy podcast. And, um, and I wonder if people would actually like listening to that. And so again, we, we, we pitched the idea and, um, and kind of like took over the main episodes of the podcast and, and changed the format from that kind of more strict catechetical style to, um, to being about, you know, just really cool. What What's the cool, weird, nerdy thing about the faith that you're into today? And, um, and so I was doing, I've done that for four years, five years now, I think. Um, and, uh, and so now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, the chaplain of a, of a college campus ministry at a uh, university of Maryland. And, um, and that is just taking up all my time. <laughs> and so it's hard to, and plus in five years, I've basically said everything that I can possibly say. So, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're passing off the podcast, uh, in part to you guys and in part to father, uh, Rob mm -hmm. Adams, who are going to take it, uh, going into the future. So that is the very quick and brief, um, uh, summary of, of, of where the podcast came from. Father, I think that that's so interesting because I think often when we start a podcast, we think it's going to go one way. And as you describe this, I like you have grown as a person. You have changed, and you know you were a seminarian. And for those who have never been to the NAC, so the seminaries in Rome, it has beautiful views of the Vatican. But you're like stuffed in a bathroom closet, um, <laughs> and like starting this <laughs> off. And so like then you are progressing into your priesthood, and now as a chaplain and. I to see like you don't necessarily have to do just one thing. Like when we start a project, it isn't necessarily going to be that throughout the duration. And mm -hmm. I think that's a gift to listeners, especially listeners who want to start something and are like, how am I going to maintain this? Or what's that going to look like in the long term or in different phases of life? Um, do you have any advice for Catholic priests? normal people that just want to start a podcast. What do you think? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I mean, one, you do everything with the Holy Spirit and trust in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? You know, all of our, you know, that, that helps to, to look at your motivations. Like, why am I doing this? How so often so many of our motivations, myself included, were so mingled with pride and vanity. Like you want to be heard, you want to be seen and and it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but there is something of like, okay, no, Holy Spirit, purify me, purify my intentions, help me to, to really proclaim your truth. Um, uh, so like on the spiritual side, like that's, I think the biggest thing, there's so much danger in being, you know, not that I am, I'm, this is a, a much lower tier podcast than someone like Father Mike Schmitz or, or Bishop Barron or something like that. But, um, uh, you know, to have someone recognize your voice or something or know, recognize you in some way you know, that oh, it puffs up the ego a little bit. And that's so dangerous, you know, to, to, to see that everything's got to be from Christ and lead towards Christ, I think is, is the most important thing. And as far as podcasts go, I, I found, um, you know, just being yourself and being comfortable to be yourself and having the freedom to do that. You don't have to put on a persona, um, for others, but be authentic. And when you're authentic, um, you know, with all the ups and downs that, that, come with that, you know, maybe I don't say things perfectly, or I don't say things the way I should. Um, but when you're authentically you, it definitely um, allows God's grace to be more effectively communicated, because it's it's not about you and coming up with just the perfect catch phrase or just the perfect thing. But it's it's him working through you. And then keeping things, uh, you know, there's a million podcasts. So I don't know if like, uh, you know, what, what's your niche? What's the thing that you love? What's the thing you're excited about? As opposed to thinking, oh, I've got to do this or do that or be Father Mike Schmitz or be someone else. You know, um, Father Mike Schmitz is us, by the way, because we did a Bible in the Year podcast first, uh, and then he That's came. True. We did. Yeah, so. <laughs> but I remember having to read a long chapter of the Book of Daniel for that. But um, but yeah, uh, like uh, just 
Seem, what 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 really inspires you? You're always going to be better talking about something that you're excited about, um, mm -hmm. and you're going to have more interesting conversations because of that. And so, just being yourself and allowing yourself to 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 kind of radiate God's grace in that way. I think that's probably the answer to your question. I don't know. We could talk about yeah. practical things about microphones and stuff like that too, if you wanted, but. <laughs> so, so I like no. that stuff because I nerd out. With the yes, um, but no. I appreciate <laughs> the spiritual there. I just want to piggyback on that too, a couple of things. Um, speaking of microphones, like you don't have to have like these crazy setups in order to start a podcast. Um, so many podcasts and even YouTube channels are just shot with, you know, a, an iPhone and they just mm -hmm. go from there. And so I think so many times we're afraid because we don't have all of these things. And one of the best things you can do is just hit record and just, mm -hmm. just start talking. And, and if you're, if you have a fear that it's going to suck at first, like it will, um, because, <laughs> because you don't know what you're doing and you're just figuring out. And so what you said about just following the Holy spirit, is so important. And I think we've tried to do that in our ministry is like, mm -hmm. it's changed so many times because the Holy Spirit has just brought us to these new places. And I mean, that's, that's the number one thing is, is it helping you grow and you grow in holiness? And if it's not, then podcasting and YouTubing is not where <laughs> not, you should be. Not where your soul yeah. should be. Yeah. And I, I want to piggyback on that, that sometimes just talking or learning about these things, if you're the only one listening, but it's helping you grow intellectually mm -hmm. to better understand God, to better understand your faith, to make it more natural to communicate about it in everyday life, which is ultimately our goal is to bring evangelization into a relationship uh, and then allow that to lead everything to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I remember even starting a Bible study and looking at Drew once and we had led in the past and we were kind of in a tough spot and we looked at each other and I was like, I just need something. And if we're the only two who show up, it's worth it. Like mm -hmm. I, my soul needs this. And that was not the case the Lord provided and he provided us with incredible community. But even if you're the only one talking, if you feel this call to start a podcast and then that's a medium that you use to grow a deeper relationship with the Lord, praise be to God. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll jump on that. Uh, or second that, like, I, I always find too, just from, you know, purely intellectual formation, it's always nice to have a project, you know, that, that kind of, we should be learning always, we should be trying to grow in knowledge of God and everything we do. But like, to have something concrete, like, oh, no, this, this is something I'm working on that I'd like to know more about, or I, you know, that, and I have this concrete project that kind of forces me to do it. Uh, I find that so helpful and and much more enjoyable too. Like you, just like I'm I'm a, a runner and and I I run marathons only so that I have a reason to train. I wouldn't train other. I like the training so much. Uh, I don't really like the race that much to be honest. But like I like the training. Uh, and, but I wouldn't train if I didn't have a goal that I had to do. You know that I'm oh I'm going to be running 26 miles in three weeks. Like I have to run. You know, and so like having something like that. Um, can be, you know, even if no one listens to it, can can be a, just a really beautiful avenue to enable you to continue that deeper intellectual growth and and, and love of of the Lord through through the intellectual life. I I just had a really good conversation with a friend who's in my Bible study uh, about this idea of digital gluttony and how mm -hmm. we as as a society we just consume, we just consume, 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 but we never produce anything, and how. Uh, how dangerous that can be and and how uh, how much of a disservice we're doing to the Lord who is the creator and who wants to co-create things with us and how it's just it's just this buffet of filling up on these things but we never do anything with that information and so he ended up writing an article for Catholic link uh, about the Eucharist and it was a it was one of the best articles I've read and it was so cool to see him come alive and and Mm -hmm. Just to back up what you're saying about the idea of having a project and and how fun and how healthy that is, even if even if no one reads it, even if it's just for you, uh, yeah. to be able to exercise that. So, is I mean, you've done a lot of podcasts I mean, throughout <laughs> the years. Are are there any that stand out to you uh, as far as either memorable or the most fun, anything like that? Yeah, um, I think my most my, the most fun one, the one I enjoyed the most was my two friends, Father, Father Alec and Father uh, um, Chris, 
we decided we we started getting on. We we stole this from other podcasts, um, but the idea of doing drafts, and um, so we did an apostles draft, which I loved, and um, uh, and it was it was it was great. Like I, I I wrote an algorithm, not very well, but um, you know, of like to try and find value, you know, hidden value in the like like to moneyball the um uh, um the uh the the whole draft process and try and like find the find the sleepers that like would would take my apostles team to the next level but i could get cheaply you know and uh and it was so much fun it was great so like it was we, we had a blast doing it and then we've gotten like legitimate fights about <laughs> whose whose team of apostles was the best um but it was a lot of fun uh so I, that was one of my favorite ones um i've been loving learning about the popes like that's been probably the best um for me, I've been working on a book based on the stuff from Habib Muspapam, like some of the fun stories I've found. We'll see if it ever gets published. But it's one of those things, like a project that I was just doing just to to write, you know, practice writing. Um, and so, like, there's some great stories in there about the popes uh, that have just been really interesting. Uh, those are the episodes that my dad tells me he skips whenever they come up in the feed because he's just bored by them. And I'm sure a lot of people are, but, uh, I had another, I had a religious sister tell me that she just skips the other ones and wants just the Pope. So I was like, okay, it balances out, you know? Uh, but like, so there've been some really great ones in there that have just been a blast. And, um, the rest, I mean, it's just like, each one is just a fun conversation. So it's not like it's, you know, there's too many shows that are just total drags that you just have to get through, you know? Uh, so, but, but those draft ones, I think are, have been a lot of fun and, um, really, really just, we just had one drop, uh, around the time we're recording this where, um, uh, we drafted 20th century theologians and that was super nerdy. It was great, but it was a lot of fun. And I found that my friend, father Chris, he, um, he just like, he only picks people based on sentimentality, like who he has a sentimental connection to, even if it's objectively not the right pick. Yeah. And it's so funny to watch, you know, it's like, of course you're going to pick him, even though, yeah. you know, Andre de Lubrock's undrafted, but you're going for this obscure person <laughs> that you happen to like a lot, you know? <laughs> um, um, let's see. Do you have any uh, thoughts for your listeners or, you know, people, I mean, cause this podcast has been, I feel like when this podcast started, there was Catholic stuff you should know. And I don't know if there were any other really big Catholic podcasts that were there. Yeah, Bishop, Bishop Barron so, was going at that time. Yeah, um, he was there. And and I, I know Father Mike Schmitz had someone started homilies. recording his homilies and just <laughs> putting them in but a Like podcast. pretty low version. Yeah. Now they're like mic'd up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I, if if you could say one thing to to your listeners, what would it be? Um, I, I guess I mean, that's that's a weird thing to think about because um, most of the time I just think of my listeners as my parents, you know. <laughs> but like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like is that the only person who listens to this podcast? Um, right. I'm always surprised when someone says, "Oh, I listen to your podcast." Like, oh no, really? It's like why? <laughs> but um, uh, I guess just I hope I, I hope and pray. You know, I need to pray more intentionally for those people who listen to the podcast. But I hope and pray that it does lead to a greater sense of joy. And if I've said anything that's uh, taken away from that connection to the Lord, then I, of course you know let that pass right away. But um, but uh, I hope that it was something delightful and something good, and um, and uh, and that the Lord was working there. And if if He has been, you know, that's a really beautiful thing. And what a what a great gift. Um, to see the Lord uh, at work um, through this kind of medium, like that's really awesome. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, it's I, I'm 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 grateful for people that actually want to listen and and who actually have. Um, some people have reached out and said when I kind of announced that I'm I'm stepping away from the show, they announced that oh you know I've been listening this whole time and I'm really grateful. And I was like oh my gosh, I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, so uh, uh, so yeah, it's I think that's that's a, a real sense of gratitude and um, a real hope uh, that God's grace has been at work. Yes. Well, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you for starting this, for continuing this, uh, and I I think for our listeners, like you will still be continuing the history of the Pope. He's not going to leave you hanging. Yeah. Um, I, that's, like, I have got to get that done. Like that's yes. what I, yeah. <laughs> that project. And although you will not be hosting the interviews anymore, mm -hmm. your voice will still be there to share as well. Yeah, and, and I would, I would recommend to our listeners who have been listening to Father Conrad for a long time, leave a comment um, or shoot us an email where, and just, just tell them, thank you. I, I think as creators, sometimes it feels like you are just, 
you just make this stuff and you have no idea if it's affecting anyone or if anyone's listening. And, and when you do hear that one, like, man, this was so amazing. This changed my life. This has been super helpful growing in holiness. Like that just means the world. And, um, and, and hope, hopefully not in a prideful way, but just in a, mm-hmm. you no, know, like the Lord has called us to this and, and it is making a difference in someone's life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. So for all of our listeners out there, please give Father Conrad a shout out. <laughs> Tell him how awesome he is. Uh, lightning good. round? Oh, yes. Yeah. Lightning round. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, first question of the lightning round is, who's your favorite saint? Uh, impossible question to answer. Thomas first Aquinas. If you were to draft. First. Yeah, exactly. First. Thomas Aquinas <laughs> is number one. <laughs> Um, I, I, I went to the university of St. Thomas Aquinas. I love his writing. I love his holiness. I just love everything about him, but like my go-to, like a more obscure saint that I love to promote is St. Polycarp. Um, one, because of his name, it sounds like a Pokemon. And then, uh, (laughs) two, because like he was super awesome. When you read what he wrote, like one of the earliest apostolic fathers, like a disciple of St. John the apostle, and so I encourage all my students like, hey, you know, God willing, when you're married someday and have children, Polycarp's a great baby name. It's a great confirmation name. You know, how can you beat it? It's just great. It's, it's good for a guy or a girl because you could a girl could go by Polly. You know, it'd be perfect. Like yeah. <laughs> how, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. Next question. I favorite devotion. Uh, litany of humility. Love the litany of humility. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that one of those things that's terrifying when you start praying it because you think, yes. oh, hopefully God doesn't actually answer my prayers, you know, but it's so good for us. And it's such a beautiful, uh, beautiful devotion. And if you haven't prayed the Litany of Humility, Google it. It's super easy, but it's uh, it's really, really something special. And if you're scared to pray the Litany of Humility, pray for the grace in order to pray the Litany of Humility. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe one of the only prayers that we hope God doesn't answer. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> yes. That's uh, so good. Aww. Okay. Uh, next question would be favorite or most recommended book recommendation. Okay. Um, I mean, I feel like I have a lot of those, um, but one that I recommend a lot, besides like everything by Father Jacques Philippe, which I recommend all the time, but an obscure one that people haven't heard of um, is They Speak by Silences. It's by an anonymous Carthusian monk. And I found it. It's kind of a cool story. I, I There's there's this thing in, in the seminary in Rome where um, uh, that we call regalo, which means you just, it just means gift, but it's basically, I'm... I'm like, I'm too self-conscious to actually throw this thing I have away. I probably should just throw it away. And so I leave it outside my room, hoping someone else will pick it up and want it. And so like most of the time, what you find on Regalo is just like junk that should just be thrown away. But every once in a while, you find a gem. And I was walking down the hallway and this book was lying on the ground outside someone's room. And I was like, what is this? And I saw the title and the title they speak by silences is a a line from one of my favorite poems, the hound of heaven by Francis Thompson. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was so like, I automatically no, recognized that. I was like, oh my gosh, what's this? And uh, so I picked it up and I started reading it. And I have given that to more people. I've bought copies of it more times. It's just such a clear, authentic, and beautiful series of meditations on the spiritual life. And it's so helpful for us who are, you know, if you're a perfectionist, if you're afraid of, uh, of God, if you're afraid of silence, if you're afraid of like, um, what if I mess things up? How, you know, there's just so much real peace and a real understanding of the spiritual life that you see in it in a very clear and perfect way. And, you know, it's written by an anonymous Carthusian monk. So he better, you know, they, they're, they're basically in silence all the time and they're like the spiritual, yeah. like superstars. So he, he probably knows what he's talking about. Well, we will put a link to that down below <laughs> for sure. Cause I'm interested now. Yeah. Ah, well, thank you, father. I think is there another question no i was just gonna ask <laughs> i mean so so you will continue to do habibus papam so mm-hmm. people can uh, listen to that where else can people find you and what you have going on with uh especially with your ministry now yeah well i mean i'm, I'm not on social media or anything like that but uh my ministry is so we are the catholic terps we're the uh, university of maryland catholic student center so we're at catholicterps.org and we're on Instagram and things like that. I'm I'm not, but uh, uh, my students are. They they do a really great job of making us look good. But um, it's an awesome, vibrant ministry. There's a lot going on. We have a lot of vocations. Which I was just yesterday. Um, one of the uh, students who was a senior, my 
first year here, um, made her first professions as a servidora sister. And it was beautiful seeing her wear her veil and her crown of flowers and everything. It was so, so awesome. And we've got tons of those. We got last year, we had six new focus missionaries come from here. And we've got like eight or nine or 10 applying this year. Like the Lord's doing a lot of stuff here and it's really, really beautiful. And so that's why I'm just trying to pour my whole heart and soul into this assignment. I love it so much. Um, and, you know, uh, if, if there's if if you want to support a really great uh, Catholic ministry, we, we need the help because we're trying to build an adoration chapel dedicated to Blessed Carlo Acutis and um, oh. who's like the perfect fit for our students because our students are all oh, comp yeah. sci nerds and they all evangelize their parents. And I like him because <laughs> they said that there was no Nutella that he could turn down, which I was like, OK, that's the same for yeah. me. Um, uh, so but we, we need help with that. And um, we we're, we still need to raise like another million dollars. So um, uh, uh, but uh, so any any. Come check us out, CatholicTurps.org. Uh, um, it's a really great place. And if you happen to be a high school student and you're thinking about coming to the University of Maryland, please come come here. So often people think, oh, it's a public school. They're not going to have a good Catholic formation. But I think our ministry stands up against any of the other Catholic schools around us, to be honest, like that there's really amazing things happening here. And you can uh, keep your faith in college and, and find your faith in college even Um uh, here at the the Catholic uh, Student Center, so that that's my that's what I'll be doing, God willing. Uh, and uh, I absolutely love it. And the Lord has been so good and so generous to me uh, in in sending me to these just amazing, amazing students who are so much holier than than I was when I was in college. That's for sure. You know, to to get to be with them and be a father to them is just so so such a privilege. So, how many Bible studies do you guys have right now? Yeah, I think there's 35 or th or 40, somewhere around there, uh, led wow. by students on campus. It's great. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And then that doesn't count. Like wow. I have a grad student Bible study with like 25 grad students in it. And like <laughs> there's there's a lot of crazy stuff happening with it. I, I don't I can't keep track of it all, to be honest. When people ask like <laughs> what's going on, it's like, oh, what isn't going on? You know, we've got yeah. three championship intramural uh, uh, sports teams. We've got, you know, we got we got it all. It's the, the total picture. So. <laughs> That's awesome. It's it's super cool to hear that you guys can have such a vibrant ministry, even in a public college, especially with everything that's been going on in the world in the last couple of years. Like what a gift to those students mm -hmm. to be able to connect in person with the Lord uh, and with other Catholics at this mm -hmm. important time in their life. So thank you for the service that you were doing there and for having the prudence. Uh, first, the fortitude to do this for the last five plus a yeah. lot longer than that years <laughs> and then the prudence and I uh, yeah temperance to really dive in deep with those students and mm -hmm. turn this over to a uh, new new primary host mm -hmm. yeah. it's only so going to take I'll off from here so um <laughs> Like like the fighter jet and the painting behind you, it's gonna it's gonna there take go. off uh, and, and and go higher. So I'm I'm grateful for the part I got to play, but uh, I'm really confident and grateful that you guys are gonna take it uh, even further. Yeah, uh, well, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, I just want to pile onto the piggyback of please go support Father Conrad and the Catholic Terps uh, because our, our priests and those who are doing ministry in colleges and universities right now are on the front lines of the battle and are just doing mm -hmm. such good work and, and changing hearts and minds. And uh, so we are just so grateful for it. Uh, Father Conrad, could you give us and your listeners a final blessing? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord be with you, and your spirit, and with your spirit. God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. Go in peace or Thanks. Stop watching. Thanks. Thanks. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for all of our listeners, thanks for uh, tuning in. We are all praying for you guys until next time. So take care and God bless.